So we're going to uh, get started here with uh, with Willie Kotyuga discussing Chat GPT. He's going to share with us some some uh, ideas about his experience with Chat GPT. What we'll do first is that I'll, I'll open us in prayer, and then I will uh, turn it over to uh, to Willie. And uh, and what I'd like to see is that this goes from from his his experiences and, and some of the things he's been doing to becoming more of a conversation to where we can talk about uh, just not so much the academic aspects of Chat GPT of of using it of use by students, but but uh, uh, how can how can we use it ethically? Uh, and Christianly as a tool for for the workplace, for ministry, for all these different things that uh, that we're we're engaged in has a lot of promise for saving time uh, and uh, it, it generating a lot of good things. So so we, we want to be thinking about that. So let me open us in prayer. Um, thank you, Lord, for for giving us this opportunity to to. Uh, to talk about and think about this this powerful tool, uh, that's uh, that's the product of of minds that uh, that you created, and we pray that uh, you would guide us to 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 thinking about how this can be used to further your kingdom uh, in, in in ethical and 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 doing it uh, and thinking this through Christianly as well. Uh, speak to us through Willie as as he as he shares his experiences and, and guide our conversation tonight in Christ's name. Amen. So uh, Willie is one of the uh, members of the Board of Regents for, for Baki Graduate University and uh, quite the successful uh, engineer, I believe, I, I think. And uh, he's been uh, using chat GPT for, for quite a while and, and learning about it and exploring it. And uh, I invited him to, to share uh, his experiences so that we can start talking about this and, and figuring out how this could become an actionable thing for, for what we're doing in, in our own uh, environments. So, Willie, I will turn it over to you. I'm looking forward to what you have to say. Well, thank you, Leroy. It's uh, good to be here. It's always good to talk about it. The nice thing about having to give a little presentation on it um, is you have to summarize everything that you know about it in a nice brief content. So everybody's heard about chat GTP and it was based on chat or GPT-3. Now they have GT GPT-4. I don't know why they don't change the initials. It's, it just call it chat. But there's um, there's many schools of thoughts. One of the biggest things is, can it be used for plagiarism? Can it be used to write your reports? Now, having used it extensively for a few months, the one thing that I did notice is it's bland. In other words, it'll spout off stuff, but you have to check it out. The other day I was um, doing some work on it, and it told me that C.S. Lewis was a Greek philosopher. So you, you really have to know your stuff. But one of the things is, uh, it, is it asks some questions and it can really help us in terms of putting things out. Um, one of the things that I've taken a challenge by one of uh, our professors at uh, BGU, Richard Nongard, he has a... Um, he has a program where you can write a book and publish a book within 12 weeks. And uh, at BGU, we're trying to look at how can we um, turn many of the dissertations into a publishable book. So he said, Willie, why don't you try it? And then we'll compare notes and see what we can do and make that available to, um, to students. So I took him up on the challenge. Uh, the only thing is I didn't have a project in mind. And uh, so it got, I was scratching my head. What, what can I do with it? 
Well, I'm a member of the uh, a the a Theology Breakfast Club. And we've been meeting, or I've been meeting with them for 15 years. And we meet once, um, once a month for breakfast. And I take copious notes. So I have 80 uh, notes of 80 meetings where theologians have spoken. They've put out their thoughts. And I said, well, why don't I just try to captivate, capture all that information and that's what I did, except when you look at um, you look at all the notes, it's kind of hard. You know, you have 30 lines that's that you've taken down and some of them are 15 years ago. And I said, how am I going to make sense of that? I mean, you take uh, 15. What is it? Uh, say it's about 2,400 lines, that's quite a few things, and it would take time. And so what I did is I grouped it. I used the mind map, and I grouped them all together, and I came up with 12 chapters. And in these 12 chapters, I had lots of notes that didn't seem to make sense. And so what I did is I just put them into chat GTP, and um, it summarized stuff for me. And so it was a great tool for summarizing and keeping the thoughts. So for example, one of the things that I I had, um, my daughter came over and I said, well, you're working on your PhD. Um, why don't I put a few keywords in? And chat GTP came out with a table of contents. And she looked at it and she said, it looks like just like my table of contents because there's a certain flow there's the thesis statement there's the bibliography and and she was so shocked at how well it came out uh the other thing that um one of the uh, seminars or one of the breakfast meetings was to celebrate the life of one of our colleagues who died and so we just sat around the table uh, and his wife was there and so we just put down a whole bunch of notes and then I put them in and it came up with a beautiful eulogy. Uh, I said, if I ever have to do a eulogy, this is the way to do it. And so um, what I thought would be interesting is just to take an example and I'm just going to share my screen and I'm going to probably do it with uh, selective so that everybody can see it properly. So it's um, it's coming on somewhere here. Uh, okay. so what I what I did, and let me just make this a little bit bigger. So you can see it. So what, uh, here we go. So in the top part of the screen, what I did is I'm preparing a talk on um, for BGU school in, um, in, in Korea. So Neil Kim, who runs the school in uh, BGU's program in Korea said, can you talk about um a subject and so i said fine i can and then i said well look let me try it with chat and what what you see here i just wrote in prepare a few paragraphs based on the text below on the subject of creating space and then i put in the things that i wanted to what I wanted to say in the talk. And so these are things that I just put in. And chat GTP just went on and uh, and created it. So let's let's try that. So I'm just gonna, I, I was on chat GTP. Now I'm gonna go into, um, 
And this is what it created. Creating space for forgiveness, grace, and reconciliation is an important aspect of spiritual growth. By the way, it always comes up with some generic statement like this. And some of it may make sense, some of it may not make sense. But the nice thing is you'll never have writer's block. Just put down about five or six things. If you're stuck, just put a few points in there and say, hey, why don't you just uh, create this? So one of the things is um, um, write a poem about higher education in Texas. And it's starting to generate. And there you have. And it's a poem. And the other day, uh, I, I'm part of a writer's group. And the writer's group, they said, okay, Willie, why don't you um, why don't you close the meeting in prayer? Okay, so I just wrote, um, write a prayer closing off our writer's group meeting. And it comes in. So we gather before you in total gratitude and humility, the gift of language, and the ability to share our thoughts, ideas, experiences through writing. We thank you for the inspiration. And it goes on and on. And, you know, you can do that. You know, you have your computer there. You, you even have it on your, on your mobile. And you need a prayer? This is a nice prayer. The only thing, sometimes it gives you garbage. So you better be careful that you, you have your prayer prepared ahead of time. But uh, it, it, it's a great tool. So it does all these fun things. Um, one of the things I had to do is uh, we're in negotiation with, um, uh, with, uh, with Lausanne, international i'm on the lausanne canada board and we wanted to get an mou so that we could transfer funds legally and they said well we need this in the next half hour so i just typed in and i'll uh here it is uh, it'll come up on the screen i think it's just pulling it up so what i did uh, let me just move it up. I said, write a memorandum of understanding using the following points. Parties are the Lausanne Movement and the Lausanne Movement Canada. Um, we want to have cooperation on the board, transfer of funds that adhere to each other's organizational bylaws. I just put those thoughts in because we had discussed them over the months. Well, what I got was what was below. You know, we sent it to our legal departments. And within half an hour, we had an MOU that was generated and signed by both parties. So there are some very practical uses, but it requires input. So for example, on this side, I had to put in a number of points who the parties are, what the purpose is, what are you going to do? You're going to transfer funds. You're going to adhere to each other's organization's bylaws. You're going to be in compliance with both Canadian and American authorities. Funds will be used as designated, and there will be a facilitation fee of 15%, 15 but for amounts greater than 5000 there will be a reduction. And that's what you get. I thought it was pretty good, Brad. I don't think you could do that in uh, in about three minutes. And Leroy, I don't think you could do it either in three minutes. But it's a great place to start, and you do have to watch it. But the way that I used it, 
was I had these hundreds of lines of text. If you just put them in any old way, what happens, it doesn't make much sense. And so what I do, and I'll get onto the screen if I can find it. Yeah, I'm just putting in something. Um, the text that I read before is actually a mind map. And I just put this together uh, with my thoughts and I organize them in a way that I thought makes made sense. And let me just expand this a little bit more. So what I read to you at the beginning is I put these different thoughts in. Now, the forgiveness credit is a story that I always start off with when it talks about creating sacred space. And so I just put in these main points. The nice thing with mind map is once you got your mind map, you can go into outline and you can just copy the whole thing. And what you do is you say, uh, in this case, you say, create a PowerPoint presentation using the text below. And then, of course, you have to put in. So one of the tricks, though, if you press carriage return, it won't have the rest of the text that I'm pasting in. Um, so you do a, a shift return. And then you just press the little arrow. And it'll start generating. So it has a sense of humor. It says, I can't create PowerPoint. But it tells you where to start. Start with an attention grabbing slide. So if you're you're stuck and you don't know what to do, you just put it into chat and it'll give you a lot of these ideas. So it says, for example, forgiveness credits, cultivating a heart of forgiveness, divide the presentation into three main sections. And it gives you a step-by-step -step answer. And you can't have writer's block when you have something like this. So those are just a few um, examples in terms of how it could be very practical, especially if your back's against the wall. Now, I don't know if you have any questions or any thoughts or throw things at me. There's a lot of things that it can do. It can do coding. It can even do loading up of Excel spreadsheets. It can do tons of stuff. But I want to focus on stuff that's practical, that'll save time. So um, someone have any any questions or any thoughts or you want to throw something or you want a poem about your wife, like the guy who um, decided, oh, I need I need a Valentine's Day poem for my wife. So he put in something into chat and he printed it out and he gave it to her and she says, oh, dear, you love me so much. So anyway. <laughs> Leroy, I, I see that you've unmuted yourself. Yeah, um, your comment about that you, you have to really watch it because sometimes you'll get bogus information. Uh, my son would echo that. He, he's been playing with chat GPT. He's a high school English teacher, and he, he was invited to talk about it at, uh, at one of their professional days. But he said that that he would put in input and ask for citations and chat GPT apparently would just make stuff up and, and, and he would have, he would get a, a an article and a, uh, and an author and things like that. And he'd search it and it, it there would be nothing. So uh, I, I thought that was, that was interesting that, that some, some uh, specious stuff uh, shows up in the results. Well, one of um, I'm, I'm I'm part of a number of writing groups, and uh, one of my one of the people in 
a writing group is an editor of a local newspaper. And she says, yes, but before we put anything, it has to be fact-checked. I want to know the references. So I just said, okay, well, this is the article. And I, I said, Chet, please. You see, this is my Canadian in me, right? I say, please, even to a computer. <laughs> Try to be too polite. So I said, please find appropriate references for each of the statements made. And it came up with the right ones. Now, anything after 2021 is really, it's not in their database. So it's it's guessing. But what happened was I found the references. For me, I found it useful in my writing is sometimes I say, gee, I remember this verse or I remember this or I remember this incident. And so what I would do while I was writing, rather than go to Wikipedia and start searching, because what happens is if you're writing, you're in a creative mode. But when you start going to Wikipedia, you're in a research mode. And then to switch back to a creative mode, it slows you down. So what I did is I just put into chat and I said, I need some uh, background information on this, this, this. And it gave it to me. And that was all within about two minutes. I had the information that I needed and uh, and away, away I went. So uh, you're right, you have to know what you're doing and it'll be fairly easy to spot um, someone once said, write me a sermon on salvation. It does that. So, for example, um, write, uh, helps if I can, write a sermon outline on salvation using the which parable? The par parable of, or, or the story, story of the prodigal son. Okay. And there it goes. You have your sermon outline. Or you can you can also say for a Bible study. So this is a useful tool if you're ever caught at the <laughs> at the last minute. So, but anyway, uh, it's all there. And then you you and the other thing is you can continue this. Um, oh, you you can write. Um, what are the references for the key uh key passages in the outline above so these are all the verses you know you need to, you need to quote some scripture it's all there and it's all put in the right spot so so I wonder how many sermons last Sunday were prepared using chat. But the the real use that I found is, uh, let me just take an, an example. I'm having some internet problems. I don't know if, okay, there it goes. So, um, so what I did is I had written a lot of stuff. And then I said, gee, it's too long. Uh, Brad will remember when we were working on the announcement for uh, the new president of, um, of BGU. What was it? It was about a thousand words, right? So what I did is I took that whole text, put it in, and I got, and I said, make it under 75 words. And it came out pretty good. I think it came out pretty good. 
But what you can do is use it to summarize what you're doing. In fact, one reference that I was quoting, it was a paper that was about 10 pages long. And I kind of remembered it, but it had been 10 years since I looked at it. So I just said, summarize this paper. I put it in and it gave me a great summary. It jogged my memory and I could continue doing my work. So this will be really helpful, for example, in places where students don't necessarily have access to libraries. So many of our students don't, um, but you have to be discerning. So what it did is it took all those and it took, I think it gave me nine paragraphs. Maybe it gave me 10. And, and then it even writes nicely. In conclusion, authority is a necessary part of human life and it provides structure. So if you see someone writing this in a paper and they've asked them to write a paper, it always says in conclusion. Or there's all these catchphrases that uh, basically that appear. And then uh, I think I changed some other things on it. And this time it wrote in summary. So those are some of the ways to use it. I could give you many different uh, examples, but it, it, it's really, it's really uh, a great tool. Um, and uh, I asked chat, uh, is, is, this, is this gonna remain free? And they say, yes. There's a limit to the, how many times you can use it. You can, and there's others. Uh, other other brands that are there there's even some specialized which will write memos for you so if you are always writing memos for the company you just put in the keywords and it'll write the memo for you and then you just cut and paste so it takes some of the tediousness out of work so any more questions or any more thoughts connie i see you're smiling well, one thing, um, let me just do this real quick. Um, I'm going to paste uh, a link in the chat. Uh, this is a link to a tweet, and, uh, and the fellow listed 21 different AI productivity tools. Uh, yeah. ChatGPT is one of them, but uh, he just listed a whole boatload of, of tools that people can use uh, for different situations. So I, I put that link on there for, for reference. Yeah, and the thing is, when I started, there were maybe two or three links. Now there's over 20 and people are using it in different ways. Um, but what I really like about it is it gets you started. And, uh, but you also have to use it wisely. So um, for example, uh, I have, I, I wanted some epigraphs, um, or if I if I just take, for example, th this case here, is this was um, from the book with, by Sky Jasani, I think his name is, and I just put in a number of thoughts on it, and I said, write me something. And I said, write it from a theologian's perspective. And so it wrote it from a theologian's perspective. Or I can say, write it from a secular perspective. So it, it's, it's really useful. The other thing that I believe it's going to be really helpful if we have creative teachers, and we all have creative teachers at BGU, but for what you can do is you can do a SWOT analysis. You know, one of the things, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So you can do a brainstorming session and everybody puts something in each one of the squares. And then you can write, chat, how would you write a narrative for the SWOT analysis that was just done? And you will get that. So, you know, how much time do we spend 
trying to formulate phrases and trying to get it right and to get the essence of it. Well, chat can do it very quickly, which means in a lesson, just doing a SWOT analysis can take easily in half an hour. But you can work interactively with students in such a way that you get a preliminary way, which teaches the concept of how you can use SWOT or PESTEL or whatever type of analysis you want to use. And which means that we don't have to spend so much time on the mechanics of it, but we can work on the principles of it. And for me, the challenge, the, the challenge is going to be how do we incorporate this into our teaching methods? How do we use it so people can help and understand the process rather than get stuck on everybody writing down? Because everything you, you know, the moment you say, oh, we're weak or um, management is, is bad, it takes time. And you can use up an hour of class time. But if you just go there, it goes fast in terms of just putting in, you type it in very quickly, and then you, you just say, do the SWOT analysis. So it means we may have to change how we do and think about teaching. Um, what do you think about the impact on cognitive skills? So, so, so some people will tell you that because we use calculators a lot, our ability to do math, some math functions in our heads has declined. Um, and uh, and you, know, you 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 start to hear people worrying about that sort of thing. You, you think, you know, have you seen anything that might uh, indicate one way or the other what, what the effect will be on our actual cognitive skills? Yeah. Um... I, a little story of when I was um, when I was doing university thermodynamics. I hated it. I hated it because they didn't allow calculators. They allowed slide rules, but slide rules were slow and they were approximations. And so the only way I was going to pass the course because I was spending so much time on the mechanics was, and this was in. 1973, I bought an electronic calculator. They only had desktop. They didn't have handheld ones. And uh, it cost $200, which was a lot of money, but I wanted to pass the course. And once I figured out how to use it properly, I learned the process and I aced the exam. But I remember... Uh, when the handheld calculator started coming out, what had happened was that um, they said, okay, you can take them into the exam, but the profs were told they can only use simple calculations. So for example, they could just use them to check. So one of the answers um, was... Uh, it was x squared equals uh, four. So what is x? Well, it's two. But the person put 1.99999 because the calculators weren't that accurate at the beginning. The prof gave him zero because he says you're not thinking. So there's ways that we can use that to figure out when people are thinking or not. Um, but in terms of your question about the cognitive skills, I think we'll be much more inclined um, to working out at processes. And when you work out at the process level, you don't need to spend the time on mechanics. Now, my daughters still do dislike me because when they want to do some calculations, I, they just rattle off the numbers. And before they press the first key, I already have the answer. Because, you know, I've been used to doing that. 
but it'll develop our creative skills. So I think that's what's going to happen. And if a person's lazy, it'll show up fairly quickly because you'll see uh, in conclusion or as a group of theologians or as whatever we, we do, you'll see those phrases keep on coming up. And so um, it'll force the brightest minds to find creative ways of doing that. So for example, when I used the, um, the mind map, I took all the data and then I classified it in a mind map. And then I put the mind map into chat and the answers were, uh, were far superior. It gave me a good story. Um, one of the things in, um, in the book I'm working on is people like to see short summaries of chapters. So what I did is I created uh, summaries, fairly rough summaries of um, each chapter. And then, uh, so there were 17 of them. And then I put it into chat and I said, write the story arc in 17 paragraphs. And what it did is it just took all the notes and all the thoughts and it wrote a very compelling story arc. I wouldn't have even thought of it. I didn't think my book on theology was that interesting, but it made it look interesting. So in terms, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to trigger different aspects of our mind. Um, and it'll be a very quick reference. You know, uh, for example, I needed to do some upgrading of my network. And I said, okay, how do you do this? And it gave me step-by-step -step instructions. It's just that I didn't know where it was in my books, in my bookshelf, or I didn't have the reference, and I really didn't want to search through Wikipedia. Lo and behold, guess what? I got the, I got the information that I needed. Hmm. So that's really, it's, that's really amazing. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking about international students, and maybe you already. I'm sorry, I got in late, but um, I just I'm thinking about international students who are writing a paper. How do we, how do we deal with that? Like if so that they don't just put down the bare minimum and then ask Chet to to do it um to to fix it kind of do they do you require them to write it out first in their language and then chat do, do they people could do that um write oh i'm just going to put in write five paragraphs summary and you know when you put it in your spelling doesn't have to be right it figures it out uh of the book Joy at Work. So there's different books you can give the author and then it just gives you a summary. And then all, all I have to do is if I'm not happy with that, is I can go back, copy that. Um, I'm gonna go back down here. By Dennis Bondi. You see? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so for example, you know, there's a lot of books that I've read in my life. Mm -hmm. And I kind of remember them. I kind of think it's in there. But here you have a, a very quick overview, which is useful. For example, you know, we have a recommended reading list or an alternative reading list. And you're trying to decide which book am I going to read? 
which is closest to what I want. And you can put some other parameters. So for example, um, management tools. You know, there could be organizational development. That's a huge subject, but you can put it down to management tools and what are the best books. And, and you can see that it, it divides, the book's divided into three parts. And you, you can write uh, simple things such as, what is appreciative inquiry? And it'll search something. I don't know what it'll come up with. It's clicking. Ah. So what I use it for also is I make reference to something. And then what I may, I'll probably take the answer that it gives and use it as a footnote. So, you know, at BGU, of course, we all know what appreciative inquiry is. And then you say, okay, uh, I don't have time to come up with 20 words on it. And so you can do this. And then um, I'm just waiting for it to finish because I'll, I'll show you another text, another trick that you can use. So you can you can see it's a it's a good summary has been used successfully. So it gives you the context. Now, if you go to Wikipedia till you find it, until you pull it out, hey, it takes time. I'm just. Uh, OK, there. And then you can say, summarize the above. So if it's too wordy, or you can write, expand the above. The other thing is I wrote something or it came back once in the first person. Make it even shorter. You know, there it is, a summary of that. So there's there's different things you can do. And, and one of the things that I did once is I came across some text that was written in the first person, dumped it in, and I said, rewrite it in the third person. And it did. You know how it, it takes time, you know, if it's a long paragraph to rewrite something in the third person. But here it did it like in like in two minutes. So it gives a different way of looking at it. Uh, okay. Re I, I can write rewrite the above from a theological perspective. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So I put in a few verses in there. <laughs> so one of the things that I, wow. I could, I could preach a whole sermon on this. <laughs> one of the things in, in the book that I'm working on is... I have my own personal stories than I have what the theologians have said about a certain subject. And then I said, boy, you're talking about theology. You know, shouldn't we talk about the Bible direct because theology is basically what people think. And, and I noticed that I had grouped it into 12 chapters and the book of Daniel was in 12 chapters. So what I did is I said, summarize um, chapter one of Daniel with the parameters of what that chapter was about. 
And what would Daniel say if he were speaking today? And so I came a whole bunch of texts. So now I've added to my book my story, the theologian's story, and perhaps one of the top theologians of the world, at least at that time, Daniel. And I couldn't believe the links, how relevant it pulled out the stuff about dreams, about the fall of, um, uh, of, uh, of Babylon. Absolutely incredible. Okay, I had to rework it all. But I saw links that I had never seen seen before. And also the other thing is this is this is one where uh, I was looking for some epigraphs, um, and I couldn't find them for a while. So find a few sep uh, suitable epigraphs from the NIV Bible that mentions the power of transformation. So it gave me four. So I said, add a few more. And then it says, sure, here are a few more. And then I said, more. And I, kept, I went more again. And then I said, find a few suitable epigraphs from secular literature that mentions the power of transformation. And it came. So that saved me a lot of time because I had these ideas roughly where these would be. But I said, why not have it work for me? So it's really an aid. Like just, for example, the 17, 17 biblical and secular and 17 secular epigraphs, it would have taken me about three, four days to come up with them. And here I have a selection of them. And I took the ones that I was familiar with. So it, it can be a powerful tool. The other, the other way that um, I would like to use this, and Richard Nungard is also doing this, he's taking an advanced course in, in chat from uh, Texas, uh, some university that's near his place. And one of the things we're looking at is taking our dissertations that we have, the ones that are the most relevant, and how can we summarize them? Because when people write dissertations, what happens, it's written to our style. It's not re always readable, and it doesn't make sense. But if a student wants to have their dissertation in a little monograph, here is a tool to get them to the next step. And we could teach, we can give a certificate course on how to use chat to help them take their dissertation, the essence of it, and come up with a monograph. And then we can post the monograph and it'll be read. Like no one has time to read a dissertation. But with our new uh, learning management system, these are all things that could be incorporated in that. So what we are doing, we're strengthening the um, we're strengthening the BGU DNA because we're giving people access to stuff that other students have used in the past and they can reference them. And so we can build on the past knowledge. And chat GTP will make a difference in terms of being able to do it. Now, it's going to be an art. And Richard and I have already been talking about how can we do this? It's not straightforward, but it also is a reminder that if you do this, what people have produced in their dissertation becomes a simpler way of expressing it to their constituents who are using their methods. Uh, so... That's very cool. I think that's really that's really interesting. I love the fact that there's so many positive things about it. So that really you've really brought a lot of that out. That's really helpful. Yeah. I mean, I I I guess what I've been hearing more on the news has been the negative side. So, you know, something to be afraid of. So, I think that's really cool to hear the positive stuff. Thank you. 
you know, it's like it's like uh, calculators. They were banned. And and to, and you know, uh, and today, you take them in. You take your little uh, smartphone, and guess what? The, he, he, you you can use it, but it depends on how it's used. And if it's just, but we also as an institution have to be smart in terms of how to use it. And isn't that what BGU is all about? Is how do you transform whatever you have in front of you, whatever God has given you, good or bad, how do you transform that? And that's part of the transformation experience. And, you know, um, I, I, I come back to doing a SWOT analysis. Uh, you know, you, you can try it. Uh, I didn't have time today, but I was going to take from some textbooks, you know, where SWOT analysis was done, all the points, and just say, what is under the strengths? What is under the weaknesses? Summarize that in one 25 word or less paragraph for each one. And it does it like in, in about two minutes. You see how fast it actually runs. And but you can also use it uh, in other ways to, for example, uh, instead of using spreadsheets, if you put in data, you can say, okay, what are some of the B main parameters of this? What uh, you know, you can put dump in a whole bunch of numbers, and you don't have to be an expert uh, expert in Excel or um, SPSS or anything. You could say, what do these numbers tell me? I mean, you have to ask the questions correctly. So what, what is happening is that people are then forced to think about their subject. So Leroy, getting back to what you asked about the cognitive skills, we're unleashing and we're opening up the door to use our critical assessment skills. Because if you ask dumb questions, you will probably get dumb answers. Garbage in equals garbage out squared. And so, uh, and I, I was thinking um, of what about with project management? Well, there's ways to get some of those tools and some of those numbers into, um, into chat and say, okay, normally uh, Louis Roy as a certified uh, project management professional, um, you can see it very quickly. But what if we can help students understand the concepts even more? You know, what is your critical timeline? So for example, um, even in terms of teaching, it simplifies things. You can have a lecture on some complicated process and you can keep on saying, simplify it. Take it from the perspective of a student and it'll come up with different ways. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, any, uh, any other comments or questions? We've been at this for about an hour, so lots, lots of rich uh, material here. Yeah, I, I think it would be uh, it would just be great if uh, people who are not afraid of trying things such as chat. Um, in fact, uh, Connie, I, I'd love to prepare a very simple course, you know, a certificate or something. Uh, I'd have to do a survey of, you know, what are people, you know, where do they get stuck in, in their dissertation writing process and make it very practical. Uh, basically, what is an outline? I gave my daughter, put in a few things. She's studying um, crimmigration, which is uh, criminal migration. And she was just so surprised how close chat came up with her final, which was approved uh, for, uh, for further research by the university. She says, that's in there. That's in there. It's all in there. And then you could say, okay, what about the angle? 
And you can even say, uh, can you give me an idea of what might be missing? So, anyway, that I think there's there's a few more steps to go, uh, but uh, give me a chance to well, give me a chance to finish my book, which will be based essentially on uh, using Chat GTP, so I can do a. I think we'll do it to the writers community, how I use chat GTP to write my book. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let me know when you're ready to do a certificate, but that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Course development was something that immediately came to mind when you came on, Connie. <laughs> <laughs> how it could help course development. It's fascinating. Fascinating yeah. thought there. Are, are you, what are you finding at the university, Leroy? Like as far as are people afraid of this? Are they, Em embracing um, it or what, what's it, the word on there the, the initial reaction is what you would expect um looking at chat gpt as a way to cheat yeah on, on written projects uh they're developing policies and all that are actually more in that perspective um i would hope that they have they're taking a uh, longer term approach and, and and looking at how this can be a tool that students can use so that they can then move on to teach students, you know, to develop students in, um, in, in other areas, higher order modes of thinking, et cetera. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, fact uh, I, I tutor athletes at the university and, and we, we got a memo uh, about that. Uh, and uh, it was, they said, don't, don't let students use, um, Let's see. Don't let students use uh, Chat GPT. Um, don't uh, don't let them talk about it, etc. And uh, they're they're developing a a uh, a policy about that. Um, it, it is likely considered a. Here's a quotation. Uh, it is likely considered a form of academic misconduct to utilize these forms of software similar to the use of Quizlet, Socratic, and Mathway. And uh, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're in the middle of developing policies. Now, one interesting story along those lines is uh, there's this, there's a, uh, 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 another AI called Practice AI. And mm -hmm. it's, it's oriented towards students, you know, writing your paper, uh, are you getting ready to graduate or write a resume for you? Things like that. And uh, but but uh, uh, there there's a lot of things in helping them do math homework and write papers and all that. So this uh, at Louisiana State University, there is this gymnast who was a huge social media star, and uh, I mean she has something like seven million followers. Uh, so she she posted an Instagram where she said something like, "I'm looking forward to sitting down with Cactus AI to you know do do my homework," and because they they had worked up a deal with her now that college athletes can get paid for their name, image, and likeness. So they worked out a deal with her, and she posted it up there. And LSU almost immediately came out and said, "We do not endorse." We do, you know, et cetera, and, and we have policies on academic misconduct and the whole bit. So, wow. so, so I think uh, I think the bottom line is right now they're they're looking at it as a uh, as a threat to academic honesty as opposed and but but I hope they're really looking at it uh, longer term as a tool that can be you know made the most of for the yeah. students. Yeah. Yeah, but, but just to let you know how advanced this stuff is getting, there was, a, I, I forget which university, but they they developed an AI-based way of evaluating art. Whoa. And there's a whole bunch of characteristics. So what they did, um, what they did is, they had a couple of art specialists evaluate a, a well-known artist's work. And they had 
the chat or the equivalent of that evaluate it. It was very close. And it wasn't complimentary. And so one of the things they're looking at is how can you use that to remove the bias, the personal bias of people? Wow. And and the artist said, I did not like the review, but guess what? The computer was right. <laughs> you know, like for example, the the strokes weren't uniform. They and they the analysis was just absolutely incredible. So, you know, we're just at, we're just starting this. Yeah. But I think if we know how to use it and we can incorporate it in our programs to help students to learn, because ultimately we want to produce transformational leaders. Yeah. And we should use all the tools that are available to us. And um, as I said at the outset of the meeting, if someone submits something, I can tell if it was chat generated. They even have software that's called Zero Chat, which basically does an analysis of uh, what percentage of the document was uh, chat generated. <laughs> AI analyzing AI, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Good. So I, I I'm actually going to use that when I complete my editing of the book to see what percentage it thinks that it was um, it was uh, text was from chat. There should be very little in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, right. Leroy, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, this story is just starting. It is. And, and thank you for taking time to do this. Uh, I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs>